Hey, what's going on everyone? And I've wanted to make this video for a while about having a vocal chain in Ableton. What does that look like? How do you make one? And yes, absolutely you can make one just using stock Ableton plugins. And I'm gonna run through in this video, show you how you can do it. You can follow along. First, we'll listen to our vocalist. Uh, she's an amazing singer. And then we're gonna go in and talk about it. So let's take a listen. I'm giving you a love in my mind. I tell you all that I can do. So every time I'm closing my eyes, I find myself next to you. So this artist's name is Rihanna Marr. She's an amazing singer, pitch perfect singer, really. What I'm gonna do right off the bat, I'm gonna grab utilities and the, well, the utility plugin. And this does a lot of like kind of general different things, um, but I'm gonna go here and I wanna set my gain staging up right. So I know that if I'm using my EQs and my compressors, I might be adding level to the signal. So I'm gonna give myself some headroom and then we can grab the EQ8. And a lot of people don't realize this, but EQ8 has this little symbol right here. Gives you a nice display. You can see everything a lot better. And you can see right off the bat, my default EQ8, I'm just cutting the lows because, you know, unless it's a bass guitar or a kick drum, um, maybe some other instruments, but generally all this kind of sub bass information is just not needed. You'll notice that when you push things up on its default adaptive Q setting, it's going to get more narrow the higher you go. I hold down Alt or Option for Mac users probably. Um, I'm a PC user, but when you hold that down and then move your mouse up and down, it just helps you shape the curve of your EQ so easily. With a lot of vocal recordings, there are frequency areas that are kind of problematic and generally you'll find them sometimes in the mid range. So we're going to take a listen, find some areas and start doing some cuts to create some more clarity in the vocal performance. I'm giving you a love in my mind, a trillion. So notice I'm boosting to find the areas that I'm not really a big fan of. A lot of times I find them around 300 to 350. That's just a general area that I tend to cut a little bit more often than others in the mid range. So I'm going to cut there. I'm giving you a love in my mind, a trillion that I can do. So every I also can hear some stuff going on at 500. So it's a boxy kind of frequency. I'm giving you a love in my mind. Add a little dip here. I'm giving you a love in my mind. A trillion that I can do. And another thing I like to do with vocals is give sort of a top end boost. I'm giving you a love in my mind. A trillion that I can do. That sounds really nice. Now, of course, it always depends on a case by case basis. You have your own mic, you have your own vocalist. I mean, literally the sound of someone's voice is gonna be different, right? So this is sort of case by case, but a lot of times the sort of general shape of creating clarity and openness to a vocal recording kind of looks like this. The next thing that we're gonna do is compression. I wanna control the dynamics of a vocal performance. I mean, think about it. Some singers might whisper in the verse and scream in the chorus, right? There's just this huge dynamic range. I want to control that. That's really what compression is about. Um, you could do other things with a compressor. I'm going to show you that as well. But I'm going to grab the Ableton compressor. I'm going to leave the ratio there. And the attack is fine. Release is probably fine. Kind of a fast release. I want this to be kind of transparent. Like you don't even really hear it. It's just controlling her voice. So as she's singing, I'm going to drag the threshold down. Kind of right to the edges there. So the loudest sections of her singing, I can kind of just control those areas. And what's neat about this compressor is you can press this symbol right here. It gives you just a different display. And if you look at the middle reverse fader, you can see if you're actually compressing something. A little bit of yellow. And then the other thing we can do with a compressor is kind of the complete opposite. Notice I didn't drag the threshold all the way down here and just smash the voice with compression, right? But you can do that when you're running it parallel. Um, so maybe I'm gonna rename this one Control and I'm gonna rename this one NY for New York Compression. So New York Compression, I'm gonna smash it really hard, but I'm gonna turn on the dry wet. I'm gonna use this from the bottom. I'm gonna dial it in from the bottom. I'm gonna hit the makeup gain knob. Uh, full disclaimer, <laughs> don't hit this uh, when it's on 100% wet because this thing is so loud, <laughs> it's crazy. So um, be careful. And uh, I'm gonna turn on auto release because I'm smashing this compressor. So I want it to sort of react to the release of her vocal performance, the release of her dynamics. And then um, we're just gonna dial it in from the bottom. I'm giving you a love in my mind, a trillion that I can do. 
And what I find this does is it has this amazing reinforcing effect. A great metaphor is like a shark fin, right? You have all this music that's floating around and then the vocal seems like on all those professional mixes, right? It just cuts through everything. And now we can move on to effects. And what I'm gonna do is use the audio effect rack. Now this is designed for creating parallel lanes of audio. So in other words, I don't have to stack on a reverb and worry about it making her voice cloudy. Um, I can have a lot of reverb on her voice and it'll sound really clear. And I'm going to show you how I do that. How this works, I'm going to hit this little button here, right click for create chain. And that's going to give me my dry chain. So I'm just going to have a lane of audio that goes right through this exactly what you hear right now. I'm giving but then we're going to add on separate chains for all of our effects. And let's just grab all the usual suspects. We got reverb. It's going to call it the reverb chain. Pitch modulation, chorus ensembles, great for that. That's one of my favorites. I might grab some saturation, add a little bit of edge to her voice. What you want to do on all of these plugins when you drag and drop them in like this is make sure they're at 100% wet because I'm going to do all the mixing in with the faders over here. And with chorus ensemble, it's really good. You might want to cut the lows. You might want to turn the rate way down. We're going for more of that modulated effect, sort of that John Lennon um, phasey vocal effect. And you can mess around with the amount however much you want. Warmth is really good. It kind of adds some buzzy saturation when you really push it hard. Let's hear it sounds a bead. I'm giving you a love in my mind. I tell you all that I can do. So every time I'm closing my eyes, I find myself next to you. And I just sort of dial it in, you know. I'm giving you a love in my mind. I tell you all that I can do. Uh, okay, let's go on to reverb. And reverb is really great. What I tend to do if I'm just trying to go for a tried and true vocal sound is if you go to the reverb section and we go to this drop down menu and hall, we do have vocal hall. It's just got something to it. What I tend to do though is I, I do cut the lows um, because similar to what we did with that EQ, right? You know, you don't really need all this like low end information in your reverb. It, it oftentimes might just make things kind of cloudy and muddy sounding. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm also going to, I like to turn reflect and diffuse up a little bit, a little more diffusion on the sound. And then another thing that people miss is that we really like reverb, but when we tend to go too crazy with it, everything gets really cloudy. Another way to deal with that is with sidechain compression. So now we're going to grab our compressor and we're going to do another third technique with compression. I'm going to drag it so it's right after vocal hall, not after the audio effect rack. I want to be right in that blue line right after vocal hall. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to side chain it. So I'm going to hit this arrow. I'm going to turn on side chain and then it's going to ask me where is the audio coming from? And it's going to come from me. <laughs> it's going to come from the vocal itself, which is um, on this uh, group bus here. And this is great for adding clarity. You can really go a lot more um, crazy with reverbs on your voice if you want to. If you just have a little bit of this, I'm going to use a lot of it so you can hear it. And that's how a lot of professional mixers get that really nice, clear sound with still tons of reverb, right? I'm giving you a love in my mind. I tell you all that I can do. So every time I'm closing my eyes, I find myself next to you. You can hear how the reverb kind of comes back in once she finishes what she's singing. Uh, it's a really cool effect. So I like to do that. And then what else we got? We got saturator. Okay. Saturation I find is really good for adding edge. And the kind of the cool thing about this with vocal chains is that even if you listen to like a pop ballad, you'd be surprised if you really listen to the tone of that vocal, maybe even later on in the song when things get louder and more dramatic, you'll find that there's sort of an edginess, like a distortion inside the vocal. It could even be on one of these pristine pop uh, singles, right? And uh, I think the reason why is it kind of helps the voice sort of like jut out in the mix. So again, like we talked about the shark fin effect, you have a little bit of edginess into the voice. Um, it just helps it cut through the instruments. What I like to do is I go to soft sign because analog clip is great, but it's, it's a little bit harsh sometimes sometimes this is case by case guys but you can use your ear and what i'm going to do is turn this output all the way down because i don't want to hurt you guys <laughs> and uh we're going to turn the drive up and see what it does i'll solo it so we just hear this chain of effect i'm giving you a love in my mind i tell you all that i can do so every time i'm closing my eyes i find myself next to you 
I'm so you can hear it's got some edge on it, right? And basically what I do is I just dial this in from the bottom and I'm kind of listening for that edginess. You can go overboard with this obviously, but uh, when you dial it in the right way, it can add something really nice. I'm giving you a love in my mind. I tell you all that I can do. So every time I'm closing my eyes, I find myself next to you. Yeah, it just adds a nice little aggression to the voice. Really nice. Um, so she's starting to sound really great. Now we can add echo. I mean, vocal delay effects. You guys can do so many things with this, but we'll just keep it simple. I'm going to go for notes. Maybe dotted can sometimes make things a little bit more jumbly. The big thing with this is going to a mid side setting. And if you look right here, you can see another little triangle, a little hidden triangle. And there's an EQ that's hidden inside this. They're already giving you a little bit of a cut, but I'm going to cut it even more because kind of like I said before, you know, we don't really need uh, all this stuff necessarily in the low end. Um, it's a case by case basis, but generally that's kind of the case, right? Um, and then here, I'm going to make this a little brighter. I'm It's got this uh, slappy kind of effect to it, which is nice. And of course, you can save all of these things individually by literally just drag and dropping them to your user library. So you do not have to do this all the time every time you bring open a session, right? But before I finish this vocal chain, there's one more thing I want to do, and that's the gain staging. So the whole idea behind this is I want my vocal chain to not fool me with more or less volume. And a great way to do it sometimes is I can go over here to the dynamics folder and glue compressor. A lot of times if I have a lot of effects in a vocal sound, just a little bit of glue compression can kind of bring things together a little bit. I like a slow attack, fast release most of the time, lower ratio. Turn this on and I'm just gonna dial this back so this needle is moving a little bit. It's just grabbing things and kind of tying it together a little bit. I'm giving you a love in my mind. I tell you all that I can do. So every time I'm closing my eyes, I find myself next to you. Okay, cool. So now what I can do is shift click. I'm going to turn everything off and we're going to do a nice AB test and make sure our makeup gain is where it needs to be so our volumes are not fooling us. I'm giving you a love in my mind. I tell you all that I can do. All right, that's sounding pretty good. You can hear there's a lot more clarity in her voice. Dynamically, she's a lot more solid. To save a lot of time in the future, I'm just going to shift click, hit control G. And now I've got my vocal chain. I can go over here. I can collapse all of this, rename this Ableton vocal chain. I'm going to put this in a link in the description below. You can get it for free. Um, feel free to download it there. Feel free to customize this any way you want, you guys, for your voice, the microphone you're using, for different singers that you might be working with, um, and have fun with the effects. Do it any way you want. This is just sort of my typical way that I do things. So um, yeah, hopefully you got something out of this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos on music production. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have fun making music.